Hey fish tube, Steven here. This is a 3D background that has adorned this 90 gallon for the past two years. I made it out of spray foam, sand, and paint. Relatively cheap, light materials that are essentially a blank canvas for a unique rock wall that you won't find in anyone else's fish room. Really, each time you make it, it turns out different. Given how well this one has held up over two years, I want to show you how I made it, and I'll tell you some tips for customizing it to your liking as we go. If you find this video to be helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing because I'm into all kinds of zany aquatic antics over here. I'm going to make this background for a 40 breeder that I intend to use as a plant farm. The inner dimensions of the back wall will be around 35 and a half inches wide by 15 and a half inches tall, or we can go with 36 by 16. I'm not too concerned about exact measurements here because as you'll see, it's very easy to trim to the right dimensions when you're done. First, you will need a few things that might seem really scary and dangerous to put in a fish tank, but pay attention to the specific materials here because I personally tested them and can confirm over two years of no ill effects. First, you'll need some sort of backing. Now, when I made this background for the 90 gallon, I used the big box store foam panel insulation. The good thing about this material is it's definitely aquarium safe and provides a rigid flat foundation, but I don't like that it's three quarters of an inch thick, takes away a ton of water volume and doesn't add anything to the look or the texture. So this time I'm going to use a temporary backing just as a template for the aquarium dimensions. You can use plastic sheeting, but I've got this roll of foam that I use to wrap fish bags when I ship in the winter and that'll work just fine. I just have to tape two pieces together and then cut it down to the approximate dimensions. Now we'll need a tarp and some outdoor space along with a bunch of sand or gravel, some spray foam insulation, Prylon Fusion spray paint, and optional polyurethane clear coat. I can attest to all of these specific products being aquarium safe as long as you allow them to fully cure. Once cured, they are inert, meaning they will not dissolve or leach chemicals. That includes the regular great stuff spray foam insulation. They do make a pond version, which I've used as well. It costs twice as much, but it's already black and it won't discolor under sunlight, so it's if you desire a black background, it's convenient, but that's really the only reason to use it. A pond-specific version doesn't mean the other stuff doesn't work. I've laid down the backing material and shaken the can of foam well, and now I'm just going to spray random lines of it all over the backing, working fairly quickly before the foam has too much time to start expanding. Then we want to start weighing down the whole thing with sand. This is the same leftover sand I used for the 90 gallon, a mixture of the finer play sand and coarse black aquarium sand. We're going to use a lot more sand than what will actually be part of the background. The majority of it is there to weigh down the foam and prevent it from expanding too far upward. It also helps randomize the textures and patterning as the foam finds little pathways to expand through the sand barrier. This step is your first opportunity to truly customize the background in a lot of different ways. For starters, you can use the spray foam that's formulated for big gaps. It expands three times as much as the regular stuff, so you'll get a lot more contrast in the peaks and valleys and it'll looks sort of like a natural rock labyrinth, especially if you pick and choose where to put more sand or less sand. But also, you don't necessarily have to use sand. Consider using fine gravel or pea gravel or a mixture of different sizes and colors and shapes of gravel and sand together for a pretty wide variety of textures. Even better, just use whatever you're going to use as your substrate so it naturally goes together. And again, it's up to you how much you want to weigh down the foam. In some of the test runs I did two years ago, I found I preferred the result you get from using more more sand, but hey, that's just me. A couple of hours have passed, so the foam is dry enough for us to check out our handiwork. Just lift carefully from both sides since the spray foam is a little bit delicate. Good thing we have the tarp. If you don't like the way yours turns out the first time, the beauty of this method is how easy it is to redo it, and all you've wasted is a couple of dollars worth of foam and a few cups of sand. In this case, I just see a few spots that are a little thin and a couple of cavities that I'd rather fill just in case a fish ever decides to trap itself in there. Depending on what you keep, you might prefer a few caverns and hideouts in there. Okay, got a second round of foam and sand, went ahead and peeled off the backing, and I think we're ready to paint but only if you want to. Depending on the combination of foam and substrate you used, you might be fine with the way it looks now. Personally, I'm going to do a little painting to add more depth, but first, let's clean up our workspace a little bit. I don't like sand. At this point, if you're going to paint it, I would recommend first making sure you don't need to trim any excess to make it fit in your aquarium. Then you can paint the cut edges while you're painting the rest of it. I forgot to do this, but ultimately it was no big deal. 
I start with a thin coating of the Krylon Fusion Black, let it dry to the touch for an hour or two, and follow up two more times with slightly heavier coats. Next is a few splotches of a lighter stone color on some of the higher points, uh, second coat, and then I follow up with a very small amount of white for some highlights. As I said, all of this paint is inert when it's cured, so give it a few days and you're ready to add the background to your aquarium if you want. Personally, I followed up with a few coats of polyurethane. I used the satin finish to tone down the gloss from the paint, and the clear coat also adds a little more depth to the overall finished product. If you don't paint the background at all, I would recommend a polyurethane coat because I think it has the added benefit of sealing in the substrate particles that might otherwise just jostle loose over time, but that's just a theory. As I said, I should have cut this before painting it, but oh well, all you need is a pair of scissors. Okay, three days later, time to silicone this to the glass. Whatever silicone you decide to use, make sure it says 100% silicone. That's it. No need to freak out just because it says something like mold free. All silicone inherently repels mold and mildew. It's not some special additive that will kill your fish. I'm using GE Silicone 1 because I already have it and it cures faster. If I had GE Silicone 2, I'd use that as I have before. The only difference in these two silicones is the method of curing. Silicone 1 has acetic acid and Silicone 2 has ammonia. It just takes a couple days for Silicone 1 to cure, whereas you need to wait a week or more for Silicone 2 to cure. Either way, once they've cured, both of them are equally aquarium safe. Anyways, that's not totally relevant to this video, but it was on my mind, so there. I'm putting a pretty thick, continuous bead of silicone around the whole thing so nothing gets trapped back here. The aquarium is laying on its side so I can position the background toward the top of the aquarium because I kind of did a sloppy job trimming it so there's a gap at the bottom, but it'll eventually be covered up with substrate. Now I need something heavy to weigh this down for a few hours while the silicone dries. Something bulky that I don't otherwise use. Something like books. Maybe not quite enough weight yet, so on top of this we should use books. We've got books that I have never read, taking up aquarium space. Okay, now we can either call it done, or we can add something to cover the back glass that shows through the top and sides of the background. Again, preventable if you take more than 10 seconds to size and trim the thing properly. I do have some scraps of the static cling black film left, so I'll just use that in the places that matter. And now we need something to get rid of those pesky bubbles, and we can't use books this time but we can use this library card. And now we're ready for aquarium number 15, a plant farm. I'll show you the full setup from my substrate layers and filtration to the plants, lighting, and fish stocking in a future video. Until then, thanks for watching. Hit all those YouTube happy buttons, and I'll see you later.